Hello, this is John Rinaldi from Real-Time Automation. I want to talk to you today about remote access. And I know that a lot of you are out there looking for devices to do remote access. There's been a pandemic, which we had a lot of people trying to access machines remotely before, especially if you were shipping a machine to Africa or Asia or someplace in Eastern Europe or someplace hard to get to, you wanted to do remote access. It makes a lot of sense. And a lot of people just don't know how to compare the different kinds of devices. So I'm gonna do what I think is a pretty fair comparison of the major devices that you can use for remote access today. Tell you what I think, and I, frankly, I'm opinionated, okay? I've got, an, I've got an opinion about what the best device is, and obviously you'll see it as we do this video. And I titled to this, you know, what don't you know about remote access that can hurt you? Because there's one thing I'm gonna tell you that you really need to know before you go buy in a remote access device. So the first one uh, that I wanna talk about is, is, is the E1. So everybody, everybody's heard that name. Everybody has, has probably used the E1. And it's, it is a great device. It's really, it's really nice. It's got the graphical, graphical user interface. It's got, it uses SSL which is a, a certificate-based way of connecting to make sure that nobody can, uh, uh, it, so it means your packages are encrypted. It uses OpenVPN, which is a, uh, a, a, a standard, really good VPN system. It's got uh, a, lot of, a lot of options. It's got Wi-Fi and cellular. It's got an SD card on it, so you can save configuration. This is, a, this is a really nice device, but there's one thing that I absolutely love about the E1, and that's the discrete input. I think that was absolutely brilliant. Why is the discrete input important? Because the way they use it makes this thing really, really secure. So what happens is that you can hook this up to be a, put a switch on it, so essentially the manufacturing people have to go and press the switch before anybody can connect remotely. Really nice, E1's a really great product, really like the E1. So uh, keep that in mind. I mean, and, and this isn't, of course, any news to any of you guys, because everybody's been using E1 now for, what, 10 years? It's done really well. Another one I'd like to talk about is, the, uh, is a Red Lion product that I like a lot. It's got a lot of great features. It's called the RL70K. Another great product, also got the graphical interface, also uses SSL, also it doesn't use OpenVPN, it is, I think it uses something called IPsec, which is a, it's just a different way of, of, of connecting. Um, it has a couple of really nice additional features that the E1 doesn't have. It's got email and text, so it can send out communications to let you know when, when stuff's going wrong. It's got not only just the SD card, it's got a, US, it's got a um, uh, I want to say USB, it's got a, uh, um, another way of, of doing that. Um, uh, oh, an SD card and USB, yeah, it's got USB, sorry. <laughs> you can tell I'm doing this live, so this is not, <laughs> and we're not going to edit the crap out of this. You know, when I make a mistake, we put it in the video, we don't screw around here and and edit. Otherwise, if we did some editing, I'd look like Tom Cruise and I'd be weighing 160 pounds. And I'd have a full head of hair But if we did editing, but we don't do editing, okay? So it's the, the, the other nice thing that about the, R, the, the uh, RL70K is the debug tools. Way, way f better than anything you're getting out with the E1. This thing has great debugs. It has ping and trace route and, and other kinds of debug tools that make this really uh, really a useful device. So in some ways, it's head and shoulders above the E1. It, instead of the, the discrete input, it has a key switch. So the same kind of thing. You can, if, you, if and the manufacturing people turn the key switch one way, people can connect, turn it the other way, they can't. So it's, it, all in all, this is a really nice, de really nice device. Now, what's the thing that, what's the problem with these devices? So let's talk about let's talk about what let's take a look at what happens when you 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 do a remote access. So let's say uh, okay we've got our 
we got our machine here, and this machine's got some kind of network. You know, it's got a network of devices, and it's probably got a PLC, and it's got a it's got devices A, B, C, D, E, F devices, and it's got some kind of uh, you got one of these things, you got an E1 or or something that that's 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 going out and and talking to the internet, and you want to do remote access to this thing. So this is the remote access thing. Uh, th this is drawing not to scale, by the way. So um, here's, the, here's the issue. So in this, it supplies to NAT, too. NAT or remote access. What happens is, if somebody is authorized to get into this network, and this network could be pretty big. It could be hundreds of devices. It could have multiple PLCs. Once they have access, they have act anybody who has that credentials has access to everything. I mean, if you once you get remote access, you can go talk to the PLC, you can talk to device B, you could go over to device C and upload its configuration, change its configuration. I mean, if somebody gets access, and that's what all these phishing, that's what all this phishing stuff is all about, is try to get the credentials so that they can use the credentials to access your manufacturing system. With these, there's no limit what you can do. So for example, if you do a NAT on this PLC, so this, and you call this, uh, we're gonna call it, this is gonna be kind of a different IP address externally, so I'll just say it's dot .70, here it's, uh, it's some subnet dot .50, and then here it's gonna be some other subnet dot .70. Anybody who knows this address, who can get onto the, onto the enterprise network, has now can do anything they want to this PLC. That's it, they're in. And once they're in, they've got, they can upload, they can put, change it from program to remote, they can write tags, they can send commands out, they can do any command, they can do any command, they can read any tag, they can read the whole data table. They got access, to, they got the keys to the kingdom. So that's the problem with a lot of these remote access devices and NAT devices, especially when you're going and buying a switch, you're using the NAT capability of a switch, you're screwing yourself, you're making, you're putting a big security hole right in, right in, your, uh, right in your manufacturing system. So the way, to, the way that it should be done is to use, is to use a firewall. You want a, a, a firewall capable device here so that you can say, firewall, also deep packet inspection helps too. So let's talk about what those are. So what do you do, what does the firewall do for you? If with the firewall, you can say that, yeah, this user, there's a NAT coming in here. We've got this dot .70 here, but anybody that's coming in here, they can only access the PLC. They can't do anything, they can't do anything else. And then with, um, with DPI, they can deep packet inspection, you can say the only thing they can do, so maybe this is a quality app up here. So normally there's a quality app that runs this, and all it does is it reads three tags out of this. So this quality app can get out there and could read those three tags. Now the problem is that if somebody steals these credentials and you don't have the deep packet inspection, you can just do anything. But with deep packet inspection, it says, hey, tag one, tag two, and tag three are all you can do. You try to, you try to access tag four, the deep packet inspector says, no way, you're not getting in to do that. With remote access, if you don't have a firewall, you can access any of these devices and do anything you want. But the firewall says, oh, you know, you're, you're, came in, you're a user on the, uh, uh, from that remote access list. All you get is the PLC. So the combination of firewall and DPI makes your remote access and your NATs and all that much more secure. Okay, so why, is, why am I telling you all this? Why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you all this because we, there's a product that I really love called ICS Defender. Defender has these capabilities. It has not only the NAT, not only the OpenVPN remote access, it has all the capabilities that you find in the E1, all the capabilities that you find in the RA70 from Red Lion, plus it has the built-in firewall and it has deep packet inspection. So if you really want to secure your manufacturing system using, and you're gonna use remote access, you're gonna use NAT, this is the device that you have to get. 
Now, and, you know, like I said, I love the E1. I like the RA70 a lot. Both love both of those devices, but they don't have, they're not really as secure as you need it to be. So today I'm here to tell you that you want to take a close look at this. You're going to pay more for this, I'll tell you right now. This is not inexpensive. And you're, if you want cheap, then this is, don't even bother going to look at this solution. But if you want to be secure, this is the thing that you really need to take a deep look at. If you want to call me, I can do it and set, set up a demo. Be glad to show you this, how, the, how this things work, take you through how the setup. It's not that, it's not that hard. Um, and I'll show you how all this stuff works in detail. So that's, that, that's what I came here to say today, and I hope that you got something out of this presentation. I enjoyed doing it. I always enjoy talking to you guys and, and delivering what I think is hopefully some useful information. Be glad if you, uh, thank you for being on our channel. Thank you for watching my video, and there's a link below where you can get some more information. Have a great day.